his presence. You feel his presence yes, sharing sir. the witness and yes, let sir. somebody know That's it. that I met the man who gave yeah. me his life for me. I can't do no more but say thank you, Jesus. I just had 10,000 tongues. I wouldn't be able to thank him with everyone enough with everyone. Good morning. What a blessing it is to be alive. What a greater blessing is that those who have gone on home to love has a bigger blessing. I ain't jealous. I'll let them in their disposition from earth to glory Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We praise the Lord. There's a sin problem in the world that is trying to steal your joy. You're not immune, and you can't escape the devil. The devil is with us, but not in us. I thank God. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, he'll hear from heaven and hear. 
heal your land. I believe God is a healer. And for those of you who place your faith and your trust in him, I can assure you he'll never let you down. He is my Lord, my God. I pray that he is yours. And I pray that you have a relationship with him that is impeccable. Relationship that he has chosen you miraculously. And... Uh, gave you salvation freely the devil creeped in not unaware but he made himself known through the fall of our salvation but it didn't stop there he robbed our Lord robbed the grief and uh, fixed it so that we could live forever. How long is that? It's just forever. There's no ending in sight. Past few days, you've seen some strange things happening. The floods, the hurricane, the fires on one end the wars and even the rumors of wars. All of these things behind our uh, Novik. We found the, the disease that have baffled us and left many, took many home to be with them. They are better off than we are. And but that is just the sin problems that we're going to have to deal with. But we shared last week by way of a message, we, a friendly reminder that Satan, will, God, will never let you down, that you can trust him when you don't, when you can't, trace him, you can trust him because he is ever present in each of our lives. And will the church just say a big amen? For the, amen. He'll never lean over and tell your neighbor, he'll never let you down. That's a friendly reminder. Psalm the 51st number The first through the thirteenth verse. Praise God, Saint. You may stand for a nice house today. God bless you for your present and God bless all of you. Let's all stand. Now, Lamar, you said, you said, amen. Psalm 51, number. The first through the 13th verses. Have mercy upon me. Glory to God. According to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. 
against thee, the only, for I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Didn't try to hide from him. No hiding place. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, I desire truth in the inward part of my life and in my hidden part that I shall make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken my rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin and blot out all mine iniquities, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence don't want to be one second without you. Uh, take none the Holy Spirit from me. Thank God he abides with us forever, that he'll never leave you. Amen. Thank God for the change over to this aid and dispensation as opposed to yesterday when the Jews had uh, the Spirit come and leave, but then we received it. When we received it, it we received something that will be forever. So we don't have to worry about the Spirit leave, leaving us. So it restore for me the joy. Now you can't lose salvation. Amen. You can lose a joy the joy uh, in the fellowship. I thank God for this is a good audience today for the time we're living in and what we're going through, all the churches all over the country. And I want to thank you for heeding this word fellowship. We got folks, and I know we got members on Zoom, and I know y'all are out there, but... Uh, I see you in the grocery stores. I see you in place so you can come to church or you can go to grocery stores. You can do all of that stuff. Don't lose the fellowship. Don't lose the joy. You can't be lost. You once saved, you're always saved. But you can lose the joy, and that is what this epidemic has done. There are a lot of people watching television, but forsake not the assembling of yourself together. Is something wrong when you don't want to go to church. Amen. Our mothers taught us that. I, amen. So, when you restore the joy of me, then will I teach you transgresses thy ways. Not our way, but your way. In all your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Praise God. You may be seated. Sin is on a rampage. Eliza, sin is on a rampage. Hallelujah. The Bible puts it in a proper perspective. It would tell you persons abandoning their first love because of 
COVID-19. Because folks found a way to make excuses as to why they ought not. They've abandoned their first love. What do you mean by abandoning your first love? That is those souls who have gone astray. They on Facebook. Sons and daughters apart from the father's house. They on the Facebook. Broken fellowship. A missing of the mark. Sin. Yes. That's it. Sin. It may be glossed over by some of us. We may try to soften it or sugarcoat it. You can become philosophical about the reason for it. And you may even attempt to uh, explain it away by some sociological rationale. But it's, guess what? It boils down that it's sin. Can I get a witness? Uh, according to what I'm told, those soap operas that we all watch, I guess, operas that claim the eyes and the ears and the time of many of us doesn't deal at all with the sin situation. Everything horizontal planetary, linear, earthly. But once you start talking about sin, the scene shifts to another level, to the vertical, to the vertical as well as to the horizontal for offenses has occurred in two directions. We can sin against one another. That's outward. And we can sin upward. That's eternal life. But only a child can posture heart, soul, mind, and lips. To the only a child of God can indicate a certain theological understanding. You just don't happen upon it. This kind of verbal line is not the product of a good vocabulary. Let it soak in. To talk like this has to be a history of an inner reaction with the infinite. Somewhere back yonder, there's been a redemptive revolt, uh, and uh, there has been a redemptive re problem that because that was a day and that was an hour that was a time when our hearts was made glad down in Mississippi Alabama Oklahoma when the soul was converted as a little boy 13 years old when the tongue shouted out I, I saw the light I saw, nobody can 
doesn't just stumble upon this rendezvous. Nobody can stumble upon this kind of uh, declaration. My soul is ever before me. My sin is there. That's the language of confection. That is a penitential time pronouncement. My soul is ever before me. I see myself in the mirror of God's righteousness, in the middle of God's holiness. And when I see me, I don't like what I see. What I see is what I know I am. What I know I am is radically different from what I once was. My wasness was a far closer likeness of my God. My amness is far from his likeness. And I am the way I am because of my sin. I wish I had some help in here. I'm faced with an awesome problem. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. It's not simply a problem of my past. It's more than that. Can you tell your neighbors more than that? If it was relegated only to my past, I could in the language of Longfellow who said, Let the dead past bury its dead, but it's not dead past, it's living past. My problem, say, this struggling saint of, is the problem of the present past. My sin is ever before me. Oh, it's not behind me. Y'all can say man. It's not behind me. Y'all can say man. It's not even beside me. My sin is before me. Even before me. Always before me. There's no time that is not before me. I can't even it, I can't escape it, I can't shake it, I can't dismiss it, I can't shug it off. I've glued myself, my very being. It's on my mind. Y'all can say, man. It's in my heart. It's glued to my very being. It's on my mind. It's my heart. My sin is ever before me. It's more than a matter of memory. I don't call it to my remembrance. It doesn't have to be called. Tell your neighbor it doesn't have to be called. It's always present. Y'all say, man, my past is forever present. Yesterday is today. The farm is current, then is now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What a terrible state of being. I go to bed with it. I get up, breathe. I get up with it. It's with me at work. I ain't worked since... 1968. But, it, but, but it, it's a job just trying to keep up with my membership. I go to bed with it. I get up with it. Eliza, I get up with it, girl. It's with me at work. It's with me at play. It never leaves me. I can't run from it. I can't escape it. There's no hiding place. My sin. It's ever before me. My, what sensitivity of spirit. 
I reiterate, such an utterance can be made only by a soul with a history of affinity with divinity that you can still be here after all you have gone through in life for that which was past to be forever in your present. It had to be it had to be gross and grievous. And David pinpoints the problem. He said, my sin. He said, my sin. Can you say my sin? He looks for no excuse. He see no escape. He assigns no blame at all to another. My sin. Delahanty is ever before me. I did it. I sinned. I am the guilty one. Lord, I sinned against thee. The only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. You know, so keen and so deep is his sensitivity that to a degree it's greater than anybody before him. David understand what he did to others. In actuality, he did it to God in reality. He even anticipated the Savior who declared one day, inasmuch as you have done it unto me, one of the least of these, you have done it unto me. My sin is ever before me against thee. The only have I sinned. I sinned with Bathsheba. I caused her husband Uriah death in order to get Bathsheba, but in reality, I sinned against God. My sin is ever before me. My problem is that of the present past. David keeps running into Uriah. Uriah's blood is on his conscience. The thought of Uriah haunted him unrelentingly. And, and lengthily, he's, he's victimized by the very past. My sin is ever before me, is what he said. It's my sin, it's me. I got a me problem. The thing that's wrong with me is me. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me. Oh, Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. You know, I'm sure that David wrote about this, his me problem, just to help us as we try to make our journey through these turbulent periods that we've been faced with. I'm sure he penned this psalm to instruct us. That's why you hear this. You're at the right place at the right time. But he wanted to instruct us on the pain that's it caused and induced by the present past. I'm sure that's why the Holy Spirit made this tragic episode a part of the Holy Record because nobody like to tell on oneself. No believer enjoyed telling the world about his sin. A sense of shame says, don't divulge it. God doesn't require it. He only demands the petition and the confession, but he used David and David's sin as a great lesson on the problem of the present past. The present past is terrible, y'all. 
We're experiencing it now. It's terrible in its consequences. It destroys your fellowship, make folks stay at home. The line of community is also disrupted. Communion between the creature and the creator is not always sweet. You've made to ask, where is the blessedness that I knew when first I saw the law? The present past introduced paranoia. It make you suspicious of everybody else. You begin to wonder who is it that's aware of your sin. Because the present past impedes our progress. It slows you down. It delays your journey. You're locked in the room and all the doors are open. You imprisoned by the present past predicament. You can't think clearly because you're unable to meditate properly. You are uneasy for you heard Isaiah say, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You become preoccupied with the day and yesterday. Your now is filled up with your den. Your mind is on the path. You can't handle the present. You have no clear vision. You got blurry eyes of the future. My sin, my sin is ever before me. What do you mean when you're faced with the problem of the present past? Fit right. Mercy need a friendly reminder. Tell your neighbor you need a friendly reminder. I'm going through hell now. If you don't believe it, you'll get get some groceries and you'll find out you'll leave the store broke. The gas price did a trick on us last night. When I asked you for your tithe, you gave it. God ain't never moved and charged you more. A lot of you trying to make your house note, car note, and all that stuff. What do you do when you're faced with the problem of pandemic? It's clear the help is needed from another quarter. Got to remind that God is out there. And you can't trust him yet. Trace him, you can trust him. You need, we need, with all this going on, we needed help from another quarter. Muhammad can't do it. Your friends and so called loved ones can't do it. You need help from another quarter. You need help from someone who operates at a level above time and historical categories somebody who is beyond time somebody who made time and ordered time to be the servant of eternity somebody with whom a thousand years is but a day somebody who doesn't go to sleep when you're sleeping at the night who neither slumber nor ever sleep. Somebody stood before the hills in order, stood, a uh, earth received her frame. Somebody who we is from everlasting to everlasting when the past is ever present. You need to talk to that somebody who is alone, is able to steal the storms and ease the trouble Mind. That's why David made his way to this praying ground. Can the church say a praying ground? David, if my people were called by my name, would just some of them say, if Doug, and pray and seek my faith. David, pray, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. 
kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. Watch me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with his up. I'll be clean. Watch me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, restore under me the joy. I want to be happy I can't make it to church early. I want to fast as I can get to the church. Lord, create it in me. Restore unto me the joy. Can I tell you something? Ain't but one way back. Prayer. A friendly reminder. Prayer is the way back. Prayer is the right to restoration. It's a contrite heart. He will not despair. It's a sincere plea that he will not ignore. God answers prayer. David made no, and I bid you farewell here. He didn't make, had no advocate. Thank God I have an advocate. You got an advocate. I have an everlasting amnes. His name is Jesus. You show his own out there. He's the rock of ages. He predates the past. He occupies the present. He deals with our problem of the present past. He did it one day on Friday out on a tree of shame where he died for my sin. He did it uh, on the tree of shame. Well. He died for my sin. And uh, he did it on Friday. Can you see him?
have moments to roll on a while longer. We've been sick in body sometime now. It was a moment we didn't think we'd make it through it. But you've been the God that you are. Somebody's fish. 